Uh, thank you very much, Riv. And it was a great series and in, in talking about the games from yesterday and from Saturday and from today. I mean, Cloud9, they, they found things to fix. Yeah, right? just they, the whole experience yeah. of it all. Uh, Cloud9 and 5, technically. Yep. Uh, they win 9, lose 5, but they won all the ones that mattered. And it was the growth of the whole team throughout this process. Like, high cannot be understated for how much confidence he gives this team and how well he makes the other players play. Because High's individual jungling performance, yeah, he landed some really good spears in that game. And he had a few nice plays. Mm -hmm. But honestly, it was just Cloud9's team fighting improving. Yeah. Right? Sneaking incarnation, playing with more confidence. Balls being successful again. Like, it, the enabling of Lemonation in a different sense from the coaching perspective to be more influence, influential in picks and bans. Like, the yeah. whole team were able to correct a lot of the mistakes, but it did actually all start when High came in as the jungler. And it's really interesting to see this team come back together because when C9 was first very dominant, it's just they were just the best players. Yeah. And they just won all the lanes, and they got all the farm because Medias just got to farm because no one lost lane, and then they would just, like, tower dive you at 20 minutes, and the game would end. And, yep. uh, you know, High learned how to call really well, and they had to call from ahead, and then they lost some games at Worlds, and they come back the next year, and they're still very good. And as it gets progressively harder and harder, and the players get better and better, and we're start, we start seeing, you know, Danish and, and Korean players come in to start bolstering the lineup, C9, no longer able to rely on just individual skill, yeah. and yet High still remains this incredibly dominant voice. Which is crazy. Like, it's not like it was all sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows when High came in, and every shot call was amazing. Oh, of course like, not. Like, Cloud9 made a lot of bad decisions throughout this entire yeah. set of playoff series, but they were always able to brush it off and maintain the confidence afterwards. Like, that is the critical thing as far as teams growing. You can yeah. make a bad call, and it can be okay. Mm -hmm. right? And they can push forward and they can continue to make good calls later because unless everyone is on the same page, even if you make the right call, if they don't follow it, it's suddenly the wrong call. So it's, it's really just a testament to how far trust can go and confidence for Cloud9's resurgence. Yep, and so that resurgence takes them all the way to the World Championship yep. here, and they are going to be one of the three teams representing the North American region. They have more hard tests ahead of them. We've seen them do good things. They took a game off Samsung Blue last time we were on at Worlds, so we'll see a whole new just, year. just what can happen <laughs> with these guys. It's going to be a very, very fun World Championship. We're going to fill out a couple more teams in the next couple of months, next couple of weeks, rather. And now to wrap up the regional quality, Qualifier. We're going to send it once more over to the analyst desk. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, an amazing game that I don't even think we could have asked for a better one had it been Liquid or Cloud9 that won in this manner. Just the story that came through, the way it was done, the barn burners that we got, amazing games. It's unbelievable. It was a joke at first. They're going to make the run, and then they did it. It was a joke at the beginning of the season. Oh, man. It, well, well, it go that long. expectations on them at the beginning of the season that Incarnation was That's going to be an outstanding right mid. And then we've come full circle, like you said. Now there's expectations again for them coming into Worlds a little bit. And we got to see how hard they had to work through each yeah. stage of the gauntlet. There were... There was no easy step here for Cloud9. They had to work for every single inch. They made it a little hard on themselves at some points. They but, learned. They but, learned a exactly. lot during the gauntlet. There you go. At least that's that's the thing. Is if you're you're in your own way, then it's a little easier to get past. We that. had to give them some training before we sent them off to Worlds for North, to represent North America. There, there was go. a test. There was definitely trial and error. Oh, that's hot. Don't touch it again. Oh, that's a moo moo. Let's not pick that again. There were some things along the way. They did it twice though. There, no, <laughs> no, no, no. You have two hands. You, can, you should burn both. <laughs> But looking at how they fixed things so quickly, how they adapted, it gives them a bit of a light at the end of the tunnel on the world stage. But again, as I mentioned, a high in the end, they did struggle through these series, so it's going to be a difficult run for them. Yeah. And there's a lot more that they have to adapt to. As everyone keeps pointing out, all these teams that are qualifying for Worlds, there are going to be two more patches, a whole, whole bunch of new champions, a whole bunch of new strategy. Change that Cloud9 are going to have to get ready. But is that good for them, though? Because remember, High was the guy who always brought out the new OP thing in the mid lane, like Soraka, and now he's bringing all these different junglers that nobody else will touch. <laughs> and now they bring so, out Amumu and Karma and, and, and Draven and, and, and like these guys, and they're still playing Varus AD carry. So are they going to be the ones to bring this new innovation? I'm definitely worlds? excited to see what they bring. Yeah. I like it. We'll see. They already said they had their, their tickets booked, so there may be even more new stuff to come out along the way. And the player that had the biggest impact today and grabbed our Player of the Series honors is sneaky. He put on his carry pants today and came up huge with his Vayne and Draven play. Just, just cashing in all oh, day yeah. long. The Stacking up the cash. The, end, the last game, not so much, but otherwise, they were running sneaky centered compositions, and you can see right here, it works out perfectly. Well, blam! Yeah. <laughs> the first game just defined the series, where he comes out with the Draven counter pick, 
forces the ban from Team Liquid, then transitioned over to Vayne, and the AD carry champions were co hotly contested this entire time. Huge and, catalyst of strength yep. for them all throughout the gauntlet. And you can't give a lot of love to a Draven Vayne player without giving love to the team that peeled for him, obviously. You don't get that kind of KDA. Prom. You don't get that kind of KDA without a lot of help. Yeah. So fantastic play all around and as well for Sneaky to grab the honors. And we can add one more team to the world's qualifiers. Cloud9 have run the gauntlet, taking down Gravity, Team Impulse, and Team Liquid to grab the third seed, their third straight trip to the world champions at Chip as well. They will join Counter Logic Gaming and TSM in Europe to compete against the best the world has to offer. But before the battle for the Summoner's Cup begins, we will be bringing you the Spring Promotion Tournament. Starting next Saturday, teams will fight to claim a place in the LCS. It kicks off in Europe with SK Gaming and Gambit defending their spots in the LCS against Gamers 2 and Mouse Sports. Then on Sunday, Enemy Esports will take on Team Coast, followed by Teammate versus Imagine. And now, as promised, we're going to check in on Twitter to see what kind of questions you've been asking. And remember, Riv, <laughs> you asked for this. I did. All right, you're, did. are you ready, Riv? I'm ready. All right. What's the routine that you undergo to keep such a fantastic and perfectly worked beard? And that's asked by at Pray With Me. Uh, pray with me. Uh, I actually don't do too much. I recently got my beard professionally trimmed after I think a year and a half of growing it. And uh, they said don't do too much. Oils can get in your beard, clog pores. Some people favor oils though, so you'll get a mix up there. But the biggest thing I have heard is just douse your beard with conditioner when you get in the shower. Don't think of me naked. And <laughs> you'll be good to go. Your now, beard will now be nice, people are thinking soft. About that. I don't, what? I don't even know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> he did that on purpose. <laughs> ah, it's in our, our brains, Riff. So you don't need anything special. It just grows on its own. It just, it just does its own thing. It's hair. I, mean, I shaved he's it the, to see if it would like the, grow back the, thicker or grow back gray, but it doesn't. And no, I don't dye my beard. <laughs> just, this is gray. This isn't. All right. Too I too might consider growing one. First, I'll have to get yeah. a girlfriend first, though. Dude, you got the stuff to do it. All right. Well, uh, no, another at man, dude, thing. man has a follow-up question here. <laughs> man, dude, man. What kind of motorcycle do you have, and does it have a name? Also, why is Thresh your favorite champion, or is he? Or is he even? Uh, good question. I have a Yamaha Bolt. I named it Deadbolt because I like Deadpool. Deadbolt works. It's kind of a cheeky name. Uh, Thresh is my favorite mechanical champion to play. Uh, Kennen is my favorite champion overall. He was my 1 to 30 when I leveled up in League of Legends. I absolutely love him. And he's the guy I, I first learned to love just crushing people on. All right. And moving on to the next question, we do have a Kennen question for you. I believe this is at X Ajito says, What is the correct Kennen skin that all players should be using? I know him. Good friend. Good friend. Hi, Ajito. Uh, the Kennen skin that all players should be using, even though I said I am a Deadpool fan, is Karate Kennen. If you're not kicking your opponents in the ass with Karate Kennen skin, then you're not kicking your opponents in the ass. <laughs> you're just slightly kicking them. And you definitely want to be hitting them where it counts. All right. All right, well, the last question is from a delightful young man at Riot Kobe asks, will you sing the Lion King song for me on the desk today? You know what, Kobe? Because it's you? <coughs> Headphones. <laughs> yes! <laughs> There you go. Kobe. That was all I wanted that was for, for you. today. That Thank was you. for you. <laughs> Fantastic day. What a, a season of LCS. We could not have asked for more as we well. Did, we didn't get our five games, but we got Riv we with the Lion King. So we, did. <laughs> we got a little Riv Lion King. We also hope that Dash starts feeling better as well so he can, again, take control of the analyst desk once more. But now for myself, the casters, and the entire live broadcast crew, thanks for watching and good night. <laughs>